how to build self-discipline, resist temptations, and reach your long-term goals. Written by Martin Meadows. Narrated by John Guinepen. Download my other book for free. I want to thank you for buying my book and offer you my other book, just as long and valuable as this book. It's called Grit. How to keep going when you want to give up. Completely free. You can find it at www.profoundselfimprovement.com slash how to build self-discipline. In Grit, I'll share with you how exactly to stick to your goals according to peak performers and science. In addition to getting Grit, you'll also have an opportunity to get my new books for free, enter giveaways, and receive other valuable emails from me. Again, here's the link to sign up. www.profoundselfimprovement.com slash how to build self-discipline. Prologue. Life is easy when you live it the hard way. The only choices that make the difference between mediocrity and success are the hard choices. The choice to stop eating unhealthy food and change your eating patterns. The choice to get rid of your television set and spend time educating yourself. The choice to follow your dreams instead of conforming to the common idea of success that doesn't give you joy. The choice to keep fighting when you can barely stand on your feet. Self-discipline is the key that will help you make these hard decisions instead of sticking with what's easy and comfortable. People who focus on instant gratification, things that are safe, easy, and comfortable, rarely reach their long-term goals. How do you build self-discipline in your life? How do you resist short-term rewards in order to reach your long-term goals? This book is the answer to these questions. Although I've been a self-disciplined person ever since I can remember, thank you, Mom, I always seek more information and advice about making myself more effective at resisting temptations. I abstained from food for over 40 hours. For two months, I took two five-minute long ice-cold showers every single day. I went on a strict diet and lost over 30 pounds in 12 weeks. On more than several occasions, I ran in shorts in negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. I lifted heavy weights to the point I saw stars in my head. I wrote over 100,000 words in a single month, which amounts to a 400-page long novel. Why the hell do I do all these crazy things? The answer is simpler than you think. No, I'm not a masochist. I do them to test my boundaries and discover how far my self-control goes. I have no doubt there's nothing more important to a successful life than to maintain a high level of self-discipline and keep growing on a daily basis. Hence, I challenge myself. I want to find out if I can resist the temptation to eat after fasting for almost two days, or go home when the frigid air makes my legs go numb. My experiments help me understand myself better and teach me useful things about self-discipline, things that can be applied to everyone's life. Don't worry though, you don't have to make yourself go through my crazy experiments, although it wouldn't hurt you. Your willingness to understand how self-discipline works and applying this knowledge to your life is all you need to change yourself. Whether you want to learn how to stick to your new eating pattern or transform your entire life, you'll find out how to do it in the following pages. Most of the advice shared in this book is based on scientific research referenced at the end of the book. To help you get the most out of the book in the shortest possible time, I decided not to go into details about each study. Instead of sharing with you the detailed why with confusing and boring descriptions of studies, I will share with you the how. Chapter 1. The Fundamentals of self-discipline. The 80-20 principle says that 80% of the results come from 20% of the efforts. In reality, you often need to know just one thing to achieve extraordinary results. Self-discipline is no different. It can also be simplified to one concept, automating your behaviors. 
You don't need any more self-discipline than you have now if you can learn how to establish new habits in your life, default actions you take when tempted to lose sight of your long-term goals. Imagine you're on a diet and someone offers you a chocolate bar. Your long-term goal is to lose weight and become healthier, but the temptation staring straight in your face, a delicious bomb of sugar, lures you in almost as if it meant your life if you didn't eat it. You wriggle and squirm, trying to draw from your willpower and say no. Two minutes later, if not sooner, the chocolate bar is gone. After all, what the hell? One chocolate bar won't screw up your diet, right? The next time someone offers you a chocolate bar, you won't be able to resist again. Soon you'll drop your diet and go back to your regular eating habits. All because you haven't developed an automated reaction to someone offering you a chocolate bar. Now imagine your behavior is automated. You followed the 80-20 principle and introduced a habit in your life. At the sight of a chocolate bar, you become self-aware of your craving. But instead of giving in, you recognize the craving for what it is, a detour that will take you away from your long-term goal. You remind yourself you can eliminate the craving by eating a piece of fruit. All of it happens in an instant. It's as natural to you as brushing your teeth right after you wake up. You don't need to exert your self-discipline to do it, do you? Congratulations, your automated behavior has prevented you from breaking your resolutions. Self-discipline starts with habits. Research shows it takes anywhere from 18 days to 254 days to form a new habit. On average, it takes a little more than two months, 66 days, to make a new behavior automatic. Each day you repeat the behavior you intend to automate, you need less discipline to make it stick. 66 days later, it takes little discipline to maintain the habit. It becomes your automatic behavior. Charles Duhigg, the author of The Power of Habit, Why We Do What We Do in Life and Business, breaks down a habit into three elements, cue, action, and reward. If your cue is the sight of a chocolate bar in the store, your action is eating it, and your reward is the sweet taste of chocolate in your mouth. Your brain follows a simple plan. When it sees the cue, it makes you perform the action, usually with little awareness, in order to get the reward it craves. Fortunately, we can use the exact same process to form positive habits and make our behaviors automated. We can also make changes to our existing bad habits and transform them into good ones. To take the example with the chocolate bar, let's assume it's your craving for something sweet that drives you to eat it. The next time you get a craving to eat a candy bar, replace it with an apple. The first time you'll modify your behavior will be the hardest. That's when your self-discipline is needed the most. You may need to put into use some of the tips I'm going to share later in the book. Once you repeat the same behavior several times, it will get easier and easier to replace the bar with an apple. Several weeks later, you will grab an apple at the sight of a chocolate bar. It will become your new default. You won't even think twice about making a different choice. Developing new habits is the essence of self-discipline, but there's a better way to introduce new habits than doing it one by one. Focus on Keystone Habits Charles Duhigg talks in his book about keystone habits, patterns that lead to the transformation of several other areas of life. Unsurprisingly, one of the most powerful habits that lead to changing other patterns is regular physical activity. Studies show that regular physical activity may lead to reduced overeating, smoking, alcohol consumption, and risk-taking. Consequently, just one change in your daily routine can help you introduce numerous other healthy changes with little to no resistance. Positive things just happen and transform your life. Sign me up. Oh, sorry, I've already benefited from this phenomenon. Just like in the example in the cited research, exercise has also made me a better person. When I started weightlifting, I went from a weak and overweight person with an unhealthy diet to a healthy, strong, and fit male. Today, all the little unhealthy habits that were part of my life before I started exercising don't exist anymore. 
It's even better than that. I have a natural resistance to go back to an unhealthy diet or other bad habits that used to rule my life. When someone offers me a bag of potato chips, I don't need any discipline to say no. It's just not a part of my new personality to eat it. Another keystone habit that can help you make changes in your life with much less discipline than tackling each of them separately is food journaling. Research shows that people who journal their intake of food ate less and made healthier choices. Besides the habit of writing down what they ate during the day, none of the participants was encouraged to change any other habits. The change, as in the case of exercise, happened naturally. I also used food journaling to keep track of what I ate. It helped me understand the amount of energy and nutrients each food provides and how to use it either to lose weight or to build muscle. Both exercising and food journaling are two keystone habits that can transform your life. But what if you already have a healthy diet and exercise regularly? Keystone habits don't stop at just these two behaviors. You can apply Duhigg's findings in any other area of your life and look for other keystone habits. Here are some potential keystone habits you can develop in your life and expect a positive chain reaction. Number one, meditation. There are at least 20 scientifically proven benefits of meditation that carry over to all areas of life. We'll talk about meditation in more detail in a later chapter. Number two, waking up earlier. Even waking 15 minutes earlier can bring a huge change in your life by letting you start your day with less stress and in no hurry. Reduced tension in the morning can help you improve your relationships with other people and become more effective at work. Number three, trying a new thing every single day. Stepping outside your comfort zone and doing things you have never done before will help you discover new hobbies, meet new people, and face your fears. Number four, saving money. No matter what you think about money and happiness, a couple of months of savings can make only positive changes in your life, leading to decreased stress and more financial safety that spills over to other aspects of your life. Number five, expressing gratitude for things you're thankful for. Studies show that writing down three things that went well on a given day led to steady increases in happiness. Is willpower a resource? Several authors, such as Kelly McGonigal and Roy Baumeister, describe willpower in their books as a limited resource that needs to be managed. Their findings, based mostly on Baumeister's research, seem interesting. Our willpower works like a muscle, and we can both strengthen it and fatigue it. Their model suggests willpower depends on our blood glucose. When it drops, so does our self-control. In other words, hungry people were more likely to make bad decisions. It didn't feel right to me. I follow an unusual eating pattern by fasting for 16 to 20 hours every single day and eating in a short 4 to 8 hour window. Yet, I don't magically give in to temptations during my period of fasting. If anything, it gives me more clarity. When researching information for this book, I found evidence that their advice might indeed be wrong. Robert Kurtzbaum and his colleagues believe that the hypothesis of willpower as a resource that can be resupplied with glucose is unlikely to be correct. A German study confirms Kurtzbaum's beliefs. Some studies even show that the amount of your willpower depends on whether you believe it's limited or not, and definitely not on your levels of blood sugar. Confusing, huh? When writing this book, I decided to adapt both points of view without the controversial get some sugar to restore your self-control. The second most important thing to learn how to live a more disciplined life is to understand how important self-awareness and motivation are and how they can help you stick to your resolutions, low blood sugar level or not. And that's what we're going to cover in the second chapter. Here's a quick recap of the fundamentals of self-discipline. On average, it takes 66 days to form a habit. Once you make a certain behavior automatic, you won't have to rely on your self-discipline to keep doing it. 
When presented with a specific cue, you will automatically react to it just like you trained yourself to. It's the simplest way to introduce more self-discipline in your life. Keystone habits give you the best bang for your buck. If you haven't already done so, introduce a habit to exercise on a regular basis. If it's already part of your routine, consider meditation, waking up earlier, expressing gratitude, saving money, or trying one new thing every day. Chapter 2 